Back in January, a group of Democratic senators, including Reverend Ruben Diaz, Carl Kruger, and Pedro Espada, did not support their party's choice for Majority Leader Malcolm Smith until their concerns were fully addressed. I'm going to vote, and I'm going to support Democrats because if they want to kill my community, no way, no how. A deal was reached after a successful meeting between Malcolm Smith, Governor David Patterson, and the three senators. With the vote of these three legislators, the Democratic Party had a majority of 32 members and won control over the state Senate, something that hasn't happened in over four decades. Historically, this so-called group of three has not been afraid to break ranks and support Republicans in different pieces of legislation. Back in December, Senator Diaz said he was willing to cross party lines if he had to, to defend those programs that are vital for our communities. That we Democrats have, have, have has achieved and obtained for our community, and now I'm not going to allow any Democrat to come and cut those programs now. Now, Senators Hiram Montserrat and Pedro Espada Jr. followed this trend and gave their support to the Republicans. And although they said they were forming bipartisan power share, the arrangement successfully re-established Republican control. Senator Spada is now the first Latino state president, and with the position of lieutenant governor vacant, he will become governor in the absence of Governor Patterson. At the very least, an unexpected development to be the understatement of the year. What I'd like to do is quickly, first from all of our panelists, and thank you for joining us, get your sense, your take of what this is all about. I think this is just raw politics. It's come out of the chamber, the, the closed doors behind the chamber, that they always work out these deals. They have this message, and all of a sudden, there's a big microscope, and I mean, a lens that's looking right into all the shenanigans that have gone on for ages. And you have a wise guy like Pedro Espada, very astute, very political savvy, who has, you know, blown this out of, I mean, into a, into a political bomb, if you will. It's raw politics at its best and worst. It's very entertaining. Wayne, what do you make of it in short? Well, these two guys have put a lot of demands on the table. They put demands on the table for the Democrats. Now they're putting in demands on the table for Republicans. Both parties tried to satisfy these demands. It's tough to satisfy these two guys. I mean, Montserrat is under felony indictment for beating up, allegedly beating up his girlfriend. So he's got a big criminal case hanging over that's going to go to trial first. So there's so many odd things out there that can affect <laughs> how these two guys are appealed to. On the same, in the context of what happens in New York politics, though, Hispanics have been locked out of New York politics. They've never held any position of power in New York City or New York State government or politics. It's, the, it's a tragic history. It's a discriminatory history. These guys can seize on that as a justification for what they're doing, but I don't really think it's the motive.